What's up, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bartle, coming at you with another special edition. And when I mean special edition of Bartle's Breakdown, I mean special. Because when you get me to wear this, <laughs> the Illinois fans go kill me, but I don't care. I'm with my Michigan brothers today. Glenn Rice, Terry Mills, Sean Higgins. Guys, what's up, man? Thanks a lot for joining. Really appreciate it. What's, what's up, up Steve? Appreciate you having us, buddy. What's up, Mr. Steve, man? Appreciate you having us on, man. Getting us back together once again. Hey, man, this is awesome because I think our era of the Big Ten was as good as the Big Ten has ever seen. And the fact that guys have gone on and had great careers and doing things like you're doing, like Sean's got his basketball program, Glenn's back with the Miami Heat, Terry Mills is the uh, radio analyst for the University of Michigan men's basketball team. So these guys have gone on and did some really, really good things. Guys, I guess I can start. Take me back to when you guys first got to Ann Arbor. I know Glenn and Hig, you guys got a little bit of age difference, but how was it blending all of this talent that you guys had at Ann Arbor during that time? Well, it was, it was, it was easy, to be honest with you, because I think uh, when you look at the type of players we had and uh, their personalities, no one really had an ego. Uh, everyone was there willing to uh, try and uh, do what they can to uh, uh, help make one another be better, help make the University of Michigan uh, succeed and, uh, you know, uh, moving forward. So uh, it, was, it was pretty easy. And, and, and we, all, we all just clicked right away because we, we liked people. We liked having fun. And, and we, we were winners. And when you have a group of winners that come together like that, uh, each individual understands what they got to do in order to make it uh, run as perfect as possible. Well, Steve, you know, a lot of us had an opportunity to play against one another in AAUs, uh, playing against Mark Hughes and Lloyd Vaught, and myself going to Ann Arbor. I mean, it was an easy choice for me. I mean, Glenn Rice was there, and me and Glenn played a lot of AAU basketball together, and okay. I kind of really felt like we really clicked together. You know, I mean, he had that outside jumper, and I knew if he get hot in a hurry, things were going to change real fast. So it was kind of a no-brainer for me, man. And then, you know, you're talking about bringing my brother, Sean Higgins, along. I mean, he was a guy that, you know, I followed as a, as a, being a little bit older than him, being right behind me. But uh, I was a big fan of Sean Higgins, and uh, we had to have him in and up. Well, for me, man, that, based off of what Terry just said, you know, like I told you in our last interview, Steve, you know, I'm originally from Michigan, so I already knew about Terry and Glenn. And, and all the guys that was from Michigan. So I just fit in good with them just because of, you know, my makeup. I, you know, I, I'm just like these guys. So it was easy for me to fit my game in and then listen to them because I was always the leader of my high school team. I, I wanted to go play with some guys that, that, that gave me an opportunity to win. And, and, and that was these guys. Well, I, you know, when Glenn, you were a sophomore in Gary Grant's senior year, is that right? That's correct. Yep. So it was it was yeah. Gary it was Gary Grant. Antoine Jobert was a uh, um, was Roy Tarpley Tarpley. still there? Yeah, Roy Tarpley. Uh, well, it, actually, it was a uh, when I went there it was a uh, Roy Tarpley, uh, Antoine Jobert, and uh, Butch Wade and Richard Relaford. It was their senior year, <laughs> and yeah, people was telling me, "Hey, man, you crazy? Why are you going there, man? You're not even going to." get any playing time. I was like, no, nah, that's not true. I'm going to get playing time. But what's more important, I'm going to get a lot of experience. I mean, yep. You know, I got these guys that are going to teach me a lot. And uh, if I, I really honestly believe if it wasn't for those guys teaching me the ropes, teaching me the understanding of the next level, I wouldn't have been able to lead our team uh, when it came down to doing what we had to do. Well, you see what you I said, I want to tell Sean this because I don't even think Sean understands. Go ahead, Glenn. I want, I want to say this real quick. When when I realized that we when I realized that we had an opportunity to get Sean Higgins, I knew everything that you need to know about this young man. I looked out like, wow, we're getting an absolutely beautiful basketball player and a beautiful person. I looked at it like this. You know what? This kid is six eight, six nine, can shoot, can handle, can do everything. And one of the things that I needed desperately to work on was my ball handling and. I always had a cheat sheet when it came to looking at Sean Higgins. But I was like, you know what? I need to get at least, if I don't get it 100% ball handling skills like him, I need to at least get 50%. And he helped me tremendously 
when he got there. And you know, Sean, hey, I always thank you about things, but I'm gonna thank you again because it was it was indeed was a a blessing in disguise for me. Yeah, well, Steve, you know, one thing you can say is that Sean Higgins didn't run for competition at all. You know, a lot of times coming in, someone can say, hey, they got Glenn Rice. Why would you want to go there? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, Sean Higgins took it head on and said, hey, I want to go play with those guys. And I want you want to talk about some matchups in practice. Sean Higgins pushed Glenn Rice to be who he is today and vice versa. I mean, Glenn pushed Sean around and, uh, and vice versa. With nobody backing down, but uh, – we had some classic uh, practices by far. Man, y'all making me, mm -hmm. man, come on, man. I'm going to go get some tissue, man. <laughs> That's okay. Come on, man. That's what's up, man. I, 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 hey, listen, I came to Michigan, man, because I knew I, I needed to work on my game, man. I knew I was going to get same thing he's saying while he went and played with Tarpley and those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I – it, it was nothing like it, man. I went on the visits. I went to Louisville. I went to all the top schools, and I seen the players they had. It was nothing like the visit when I went up there on my recruiting trip, man. You know, you you just feel basketball, man. These dudes all about hooping. Mm. You know, when yeah. I was on my – T. Mills, you remember we was on the recruiting trip, man, how much time we spent together, man, on that on that weekend. Gary Grant was my original host. I dissed Gary Grant start hanging with T. Mills. <laughs> 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 yeah, he did. Hey, hey, he, you, you was my prize recruit, man. And I, and I always tell people to this day, I got every recruit that I ever took out. The only one I ever lost was Walter Bond. And I told Walter Bond mm -hmm. that person, I say, Walter, you sold me out. He's like, hey, man, you had Higgins, man. What, what, what could I do at that point in time? So, uh, Hey, you know how true that story is, man? Walter Bond is a great <laughs> public speaker now, man. He came out here to Las Vegas to speak. At the city, at city Hall, and I went down there to listen to him speak. He didn't know I was coming. I just saw his name. I went down there and checked him out, and he noticed me in the stands, in, in the audience, and he made me stand up. And he <laughs> said, you see this guy right here? He said, my dream school was to go play at the University of Michigan. He said, when they signed him, that killed my dream. <laughs> I, I didn't never mm. know that. I was like, come on, man. Hey, and now T. Mills saying that. Walter that's Bond, that's man, that's is a good guy, man. And he was tough, too. You know, that's what we that now I understand why he used to go at me when we played Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was personal. Yeah, it was yeah, personal, he, yeah. So he so was Terry, smart. He was smart by moving on though. Yeah, he was. Oh, now I'm gonna uh, keep it real. I averaged twenty two against Minnesota. Oh, so you 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 gave it to him as much as he was trying to give it to you. Yeah, no, he wasn't guarding me. Willie Burton was. Oh, okay. <laughs> and no, 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 no. Willie Burton was guarding uh, Glenn. They had uh, Lynch on me. Oh, Kevin Lynch. Yep. Yep. Kevin yeah. Lynch. Yeah. Yep. They had a crew too, man. They had, they a, crew. had a crew. So Terry, who who was the kind of the guy <clears throat> that you you kind of they took you under their wing when you first got to Michigan? Was there anybody like that? Uh, it would have to be either Gary Grant or Glenn Rice. You know, I was a little bit more closer to Glenn. Like I said, we had that uh, relationship in AAU basketball mm -hmm. uh, where we actually, you know, went over and played over in Jacksonville, Florida with Andre Rising at the point guard and oh, Anthony yeah. Pendleton. And, yep. you, know, uh, you know, that was just uh, something that you'll never forget is being able to go over there and play. And, you know, even playing in the summer times in the Sandy Sanders League, you know, I thought that, you know, Glenn took me under his wing and, uh, those relationships just kept building. How good was Anthony uh, Pendleton, man? God, dog. I seen Anthony Pendleton at Nike camp, man. He killed – remember he killed everybody at Nike camp, T. Mills? <laughs> An Anthony, Pen Anthony Pendleton was like a version of you, Sean. Yeah, I mean, oh, he was cold, Glenn. He was, oh, he was cold. I mean, that, that boy had a string on that ball, could shoot, jump. And when he was on our team in high school, I mean, we didn't even have a three-point line there, but this man was basically shooting the ball out of bounds. It's just that. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, he, it's just that, you know, one of the things that happened to him is that he wasn't as dedicated to the books as he was on the court. So oh, they kind of okay. put him back a little bit. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, Yank could get it done. There's no doubt about it, man. Yank he, could he got MVP. It. He got MVP in your senior year at Nike camp when you and J.R.E. was there. Okay. Yank was oh, the MVP yep. of that camp. So wait a minute, Glenn. Andre Risen <laughs> was a point guard. You yep. and Jeff Greer and Anthony Pendleton on the same high school team? Yes, sir. That's Absolutely. crazy. I remember one uh, when we my my junior year, it was a team that was, I believe, from Ohio. 
and they were ranked like two in the country. And I believe we was like, I don't know, probably like 11 or 12. They came in and they thought they was going to come in our high school and, and beat them. I think we ended up beating them by like 36 points. <laughs> but we, we were good, man. We were really good. Man. We didn't play around. But that's, that's, that's what we do in Michigan. You know, we don't, we don't play around when it comes to basketball. Oh, that's for sure. Because that era, we're talking Jeff Greer, Terrence Green. Uh, uh, who am I missing? Help me out. You, you the, uh, I mean, we had a, a you, we, first of all, it started out with Trent Tucker. Trent Tucker went on to play with the Chicago Bulls, and uh, we had Barry Stevens, who had a stint with, uh, I believe, uh, Cleveland, I believe. Uh, he played with me in San Antonio, uh, G. Was, played, and he was in San Antonio with me. I forgot. Yeah, Barry rest Stevens. in peace, Barry Stevens. He was from, he was uh-huh. from Grand Rapids. It, well, he was from Flint. He was from Flint. He uh, he actually he was a uh, okay. Yeah, he was two years ahead of me at uh, Flint Northwestern. Yeah, I never Marty, got Mo, Marty to Emery was up there too, wasn't he? Marty Emery, man, let me Marty tell you. Emery from DePaul. Marty Emery. Yes, sir. The biggest dude I had ever seen. <laughs> he <was a> big <laughs> boy. I mean, hey, and hey, I, and that Marty, Marty Emery, uh, a chef now. He like to cook. He's a he's a, he's a, a certified chef. chef. Yeah. A certified chef. Imagine, man, when I first seen him, I always related to the, the story when I was a little kid growing up, and we always talked about how big Paul Bunyan was. When I seen this kid, I was like, Jesus, not only was he big, but this dude had, it was the first dude I seen muscles coming out of everywhere, and it, it was scary, man. <laughs> yeah, Emory, <laughs> Marty's a big boy. So, guys, yeah, and then, then y'all had the McGee, and, and y'all had the McGee Mar- twins up there in Flint, too. We, uh, you know, they represented the, the young women. Very so well. we had her, we had, now. Oh, she she got to get down. She got oh, to get down know. with the get down. Ooh. Yeah, no doubt. I've seen her fight several times, man. Watch out. So Layla Ali, Layla Ali don't want no parts of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gonna we 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 gonna promote the fight right now. I'm go. telling you. So, so guys, I'm going let, with the Flintstone. Let me ask me you, too. Let me ask you both each of you this question. What was your personal wake-up call, welcome to the Big Ten moment? I'm a, I'll share mine. Freshman year, coming up, guarding Everett Stevens full court. Everett Stevens all of a sudden goes full speed for some reason. I run into Kip Jones. Y'all remember Kip ooh, Jones? Oh, 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 oh. And I, could, I couldn't that, hear for that hurt. And I, I, <laughs> I hit him, I fell on the ground. He was like, welcome to the Big Ten, young fella, and ran down the floor. That was my welcome moment. What was yours? Uh, Terry, you can start. Yeah, I, I don't know what they had going on up there at Purdue, but like you said, man, it probably would have been <laughs> me defending Melvin McCants, man. McCants. I'm talking about you <laughs> could not get around this guy. This guy was stronger than I don't know what. And like you said, you don't know what they was doing up there, man. It's like they was eating steel up in Purdue. <laughs> my wall, yeah. my motor, my, go ahead, Gary. Mine actually was in practice. When I first got uh, up in uh, at the University of Michigan, uh, I was going up against Richard Relaford, and I'm thinking like, well, you know what? This Richard's a big guy, but he don't look so strong. <laughs> Man, this guy had me on the block one time, moved me out the way as if I was never there. Went up and dunked on me, and look, yeah, you're gonna be my rookie for the rest of the year. Oh, wow. I'm like, I was like, wow, I've never had anybody don't like that on me and just move me out the way like that. But it was the best wake up call I could ever have. And yes, I I became his rookie and I always paid tribute to him that, you know what, without his mentorship, it would have been a long haul for me. Hmm. Well, well, see, my my moment of awakening to the Big Ten was before I really got on campus. Okay. This man right here, Glenn Rice, the one walking me to the Big Ten. Hey, uh, hey, Steve! I told you the story. What happened? Didn't we happen after the McDonald's game? Yep, you sure did. T. Mills is there, so he a witness. Yep. I'm telling you, I, I, I never got done like that before, man. <laughs> and so it, it, it just woke me up and was like, "Yo, you gonna have to get your act together, bro." <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, for real, man. I told you nobody ever destroyed me like that. Mm. You know, because I was always long. I, you know, I could, I could make guys pick up their dribble. Right and and, and mm-hmm. Glenn Rice he never he didn't he need a dribble, all he needed was that no. little inch. 
Yeah, that's true. And, and, and I mean, I'm like, how is he seeing the basket? I'm up on him. <laughs> <laughs> that basket don't move. You know where it's at. That's man. Right. So, so Glenn, and then you know what Glenn did for me, man? I asked him, Glenn, you might not remember this, man. But I asked him, I said, man, how do you get around screens? Because I used to try to run him back off screens and he'd get through them. Mm-hmm. Remember you taught me how to keep your hand on the guy hip and dance over the screen? That's right. Every since every since then, you know, I was I, it helped me in the league. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So all guys, those little tricks help. Let, let me ask you this. What was and then let, let me I'm sorry. And no, Glenn used not. to have tricks too, man. He used to hold, you know, oh, Glenn yeah. will hold you by your wrist. Before yeah. you run off that pick, he'll snatch you up by your wrist <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and neutralize you. And, 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 Sean, now you understand why I went and wanted to be at Michigan and play with those veteran players that was on the team. Because yes, they sir. taught me all those tricks. All those tricks. And you pass them down to me like big bro. That's right. That's what oh, we that's do, brother. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Grab you by the wrist, take you off a screen, and then stop him. When you run into him, he'll call a foul. <laughs> and, and look. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, oh. right, let me ask you this. I, there's a, you know, we had all these matchups in the Big Ten. 17 first and second round draft picks in me and Terry senior, uh, junior and senior year alone, right? So what was the team that gave y'all a matchup issue? You could you could beat them, but you always had to, you could you couldn't come in there messing around. You always had to bring your A game. What 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 uh team was that? Well, well, well. <laughs> you were a part of that team, young fellow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fighting, That's the what fighting. I was going to say. I, and when I say the fighting the line, I, ooh, man, it was terror, man. I'm, I'm talking about you guys had, and I've told you this before, and I honestly mean this, and I'm pretty sure most of America would probably agree with me. You guys had the most athletic guys, the yeah. most talented. I mean, you. It seemed like every one of you guys had that deer blood in you that could bounce around, had the speed, and had the determination to play defense like no one else could in the Big Ten. And, yeah. and you had that intimidation factor. And, yeah, you were, you were by far the scariest team that we had to, had to face. And you, and you kicked our butt enough to make sure that we had some fear with you guys. And, and that fear was good for us because eventually we were able to uh, – get the big win against you guys. I won't sit here and say we conquered you guys. No, but yeah, we got the big said, win. Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> no, it, wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a conquer. We we were able to get get our get our butts in gear and be able to do the things we had to do to uh offset your your athleticism and the defensive uh, I mean you guys every time a ball came off the rim you was already there before anyone even bent down to try and go up and get a rebound. So once we realized how to stop all that, all that, we were able to beat you guys when when it really counted. Hey, hey, you know one thing I always thought about, man, when we played y'all in the final four, is is why didn't why didn't um Lou Henson play Marcus and Irvin Small more of that game? Because Lowe was hurt. You, Lowe had an ankle injury before that game. He did. He did. I'm going to share something with y'all that y'all probably haven't heard before. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out how to say this in, in, in the most political uh, <laughs> way. Uh, so Lou Henson, guy, I, I love Lou. I didn't like him when I played for him. Mm-hmm. But what, what happened was Lou got so excited in the Final Four guys and the way that you all were playing, we didn't know how to, to adjust. You guys don't remember this from the eight minute mark to the two minute mark in the second half. Kendall Gill was on the bench. He wasn't in foul trouble. Yeah. Lou forgot he was on the bench. Wow. He was so excited. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to stop Glenn Rice that he forgets the number five <laughs> pick in the 1990 NBA draft is on the bench five critical minutes. Now I don't know. I don't. I don't think we would have beat you guys that day because you all had an answer for everything that we did. But that was a big deal, man. And Irvin and Marcus really got us past Louisville and Syracuse because Kenny Battle and Lowell Hamilton were hurt. That's mm-hmm. why I said that. Yeah, in the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight. So, uh, but two things. 
I re I'll never forget this. I tell everybody that, that'll listen. Our game had 33 lead changes. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the most in, in NCAA tournament history. Um, there was a, we set another record during that game. Obviously, Glenn is the leading scorer in NCAA tournament history. There was another record that, that was set. It might have been pros in the game. You guys had yeah. eight guys for, that played in the NBA, and we had five. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's been wow. matched since then. Even no. with Kentucky teams and all that, I don't think that's been matched. But let me ask Terry and Sean, is there, was there a team in the Big Ten uh, – that you guys were, you know, outside of us, that you guys were like, man, you know, this is a funky matchup. Was there anybody? Yeah, like well, yeah, well I'm going to go 1A and 1B, and 1A is going to be you guys. And, you know, Glenn had talked about it, and our whole thing is we had to neutralize you guys the best way we could and, and, and take away the dunks and the exciting plays, and that's what we did during that game we won. Uh, and B would be uh, Indiana. We just could not figure out how to beat Indiana. I know you guys beat them at the horn that year, but yeah. they beat us at the horn, I think, twice that year. No, nah, they, they cheated. Just, they cheated. We, yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> we will say that. But we never could figure them out, though, no. Steve. You know, uh, you would look at us on paper and you would say that, hey, this team, we should totally come in here and dominate this team. But they would just find a way, and we never could figure that team out. Uh, For me, awesome. man, I'm not going to say Illinois because G&T Mills just mentioned you guys. That's a no-brainer, but – Man, we could never go down to that Wisconsin and win, man. Mm. Oh, you ain't kidding. We could never go. And we knew we was we was bigger than them, better than them, man. Because they had come to Ann Arbor and we beat the draws off of them. Sure. <laughs> sure. But no. then you go down there. They, what was the name of that student section? The Bleacher Creatures. Yep. Yeah, that, that was In the old field house. That's right. Yep. 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 Now, yeah, loud down there with uh, Willie Sims and uh, Danny Jones. That's right. And Tracy, what was my man from Chicago's name? Tracy, uh, uh, Trent, um, it's, it's, the, the little guard. Oh, the cat that could jump out of the gym that could shoot? Yeah, he was from Chicago, wasn't he? Or Illinois. Trent Jackson. Trent Jackson, there you yeah. go. Yeah, could, could fill it up. Funny yeah, story, score. guy. That year, <clears throat> you guys are third in the Big Ten. We're second. Indiana's first. Here, Here's why we lost the title. We go to Michigan State. Y'all remember we used to play them 9 o'clock Eastern time games on ESPN? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On oh, Big Monday. Yeah. Big Monday. Well, this yeah, is Big Monday. Monday. Hey, team Mills, remember on Big Monday we used to stop at Hawkins and get that chicken wing dinner? <laughs> <laughs> and we go over to watch, watch Big Monday. Yes, we did. So that Thursday, we whooped Michigan State. Might have been our best game of the year. So y'all know we went out after the game. Kicked it to about four or five in the morning, but then mm. back then we used to have them late Thursday night games. But you turn around on a Saturday afternoon, so we left mm -hmm. Michigan State. We we go to Wisconsin. No, they beat us by twenty at their place, mm. and that mm. cost us mm. the Big Ten title. I'll never forget that. Yeah, uh, that's 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 something you really can't forget right there, especially when you know you're supposed to beat the team when you done done it over and over. And yeah, Woo. and I mean, it'd be hard they, to swallow. They they spanked us by twenty that day, and it was just you know we just couldn't didn't have nothing for them. So guys, who was the funniest guy on your team during your time at Michigan, and why? <laughs> Gary Grant. Why? Uh, he was just always clowning. <laughs> he he was clowning every day. He come to the locker room clowning. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm have to go. I'm gonna have to go with Demetrius Caleb just because he was my roommate on the road. And uh, you want to talk about uh, cap sessions all night long, wrestling all night long? It had to be Caleb, you know. And uh, you know, the minute he hit hit the campus, you know, everybody was was laughing at that young man because he used to wear suits and and carry a briefcase <laughs> all the time. Hey, T Mill, he used to have a briefcase too. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he what? was fun, Gary. Go ahead. Gary Grant was a fool, man. I, I mean, that's the that guy, man. He would do some of the most ridiculous things that you would ever imagine a human doing. I mean, he I, sometimes like Gary, he just ain't got no sense, man. He would do some <laughs> things that I. He would do some things that I can't even mention. 
to you. Yeah, guys. not just, yeah. The, the most the most off the the most wackiest thing you can think of, Gary has probably done it. Probably done it. So the, a, answer this for me. How did he get out of Ohio State? How did he get out of the state of Ohio and come to Michigan? Probably Bill Frieder. <laughs> yeah, it was Bill Frieder. I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Roy Tarpley and, and uh, Richard Relaford, Antoine Jobert, they all probably had him out on the campus. And and listen, when I tell you Gary liked women, they probably showed him the the best time ever. And uh, once you put that in front of Gary, it ain't hard to convince him to do anything. <laughs> hey, 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 y'all hear the funny story? He was hanging out at the Nectarine Ballroom in that Dooley's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, and he loved and he loved dancing. <laughs> that was the perfect place to take him. Yeah, he was. Hey, man, my first night on my recruiting trip, Gary took me out. And he was, you know, he was the man. He was All-American. He said, I'm going to show you what the girls look like on campus. I'm going to take you over to these girls' department. They bad. <laughs> and I had a pen pal up there, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was, you know, talking back and forth. We didn't have all these electronics and devices back then. We had to write letters. Yeah, so, that's right. And so I had a pen pal that they put on me up there. I'm not going to mention her name. But uh, <laughs> Gary took me over the house. He said, he said, I'm going to show you how these girls look up. I'm going to show you how bad the girls in Michigan are, right? We walked into the apartment, and the girls her and her roommate jumped on me and hugged me. They already knew me. Oh. He got mad. He was like, y'all know him? <laughs> and you know Gary didn't he, want, he, he didn't he, like being one up. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to be one up on you. He left me over there. He left me. I, they ended up taking me back to the campus in. That's when I, I hung out with T-Mills for the rest of the weekend. That's funny, man. man. So, guys, how, how was Bill Frieder as a coach? Like, did you guys really get along with him? I did. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got along with Bill. I mean, Bill was great, man. Bill, like I said, Bill, you know, recruited all of us, man. Bill was a fun. He was a funny guy. Bill, I mean, he, he, he taught us how to play. He, he, that team actually, I mean, when you really want to think about it, that was his team because all the guys that was there, the majority of the guys anyway, uh, was guys that he recruited, guys that he, uh, you know, pretty much adopted us. And, and you know, when I, when I say when, when, when we went to go on and win a national championship, uh, we can't say uh, that Bill Frieda was not a part of that because he was just a part of that as anybody. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. He was more like a like a father figure to a lot of us, you know, on campus, mm -hmm. you know, just making sure that, uh, you know, we were on top of our games because uh, mm -hmm. I know when he came in to house visits and things like that, he would always tell your parents, hey, I'm going to take good care of him. I'm going to treat him like he was my own. And he did mm -hmm. just that. And I think that that's probably why he got a lot of us because he did just that. Well, Coach Frieder, for me, man, he was a relentless recruiter, man. He recruited me harder than anybody. You know, he, he he spent a lot of time, you know, in Los Angeles at my high school. And that was impressive to me, coming all the way. Fly, that's a long flight, man. And I used to see Coach Frieder in my, on my campus a lot. He couldn't talk to me, but I just seen him walking around so I could see him. And, and T. Mills tell that same story. That, so I guess that was part of his tactics. He wanted to be visible. Mm. But then when I got on campus, man, you know, I was a little rebellious. It was my first time away from home. And I was doing the most as my freshman year. And uh, and Coach Frieder, man, he stayed on me. You know, he's had me run. What did you tell you, uh, say, T, when we was on a podcast last year, we talked about that me and Terry probably logged the most minutes after practice running. <laughs> because we was always getting in trouble. We, we, we wasn't really – we weren't getting in trouble like that, man. But, you know, we missed a couple classes. And Coach Frieder knew about it. I said, man, there's no way you're going to know I missed class today. As soon as I walk in there, man, in the locker room, Coach want to see you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what about yeah that day that uh he made everybody else run and made me and you sit on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we got back. I think we came back from like Wisconsin. Steve, we got back at like three o'clock in the morning, and uh, it, coaches was like, "Make sure everybody go to class." It was like, "Yeah, okay." Me and Higgins uh, had a class together. I was like, "Man, I ain't going, man." He was like, "I ain't going either." <laughs> so then, <laughs> so we go to practice the next day, and it, coach was like. Everybody made it to class today. And they, me and Sean sitting there saying, yeah, we made it. We was there. And all of a sudden, here comes the professor coming down uh, on the court to say that we weren't in class. Ooh. It's like, mm -hmm. you and Sean, y'all go sit on the sideline. The rest of the team get on the line. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you know what? 
I, mm. When I was a JUCO coach, I used that same tactic on two of my best players. When they walked in my practice late, I made the whole team run, made them sit on the side and watch them. Yep. It's effective, mm. man. It's effective. So, guys, listen. You guys are Michigan men. And what the, the I had a lady that I used to date, and her family is just crazy Michigan. Her brother went to school there, went to law school there. Explain to our viewers what it means to be a Michigan man, because it, it, to me it seems like you guys are, are you take care of business in the in the classroom. You guys are model citizens. You 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 know you have your fun or whatever. But you guys, I didn't hear about you guys getting in trouble or anything like that. You guys were superior ath athletes and ball players, and y'all were cool. It wasn't y'all weren't no assholes or nothing like that. Y'all were always right. y'all were always cool to us when we saw you. So can you talk about what it means to be like a Michigan man? Terry, you want to well, go first? I, yeah, no, you, know, I mean, you, you just said it. It's, it's just about coming out and being professional and respecting mm -hmm. one another. And, uh, you know, when you step foot on campus and, and the people that surround you, whether they're counselors, that's what they demand. You know, you talk about a guy like Bo Schembechler who took interest and a guy like myself and, you know, when me not playing my freshman year, him actually sending me a pass and I go sit in his office, and he said, I heard you were late for class. And mm -hmm. I said, no, I haven't. I'm, I haven't been late for class, coach. He was like, yes, you have. You've been late every time this week. I said, well, what do you mean by being late? He said, <laughs> uh, you must have just walked in when it started. He said, being there 15 minutes early is being on time. And I wow. carry that to this day. So just things like that that you hear and people that around Ann Arbor that had interest in you and your best interest at heart. I think that, that that says what a Michigan man is all about. And, uh, you know, you really don't reap those benefits, Steve, until after you leave. Once yeah. you leave and get our age that we are now, you really start to understand what it's like to be a Michigan man. When you see that alumni as you go from city to city and people kind of recognize you and, and, and thank you for all the things that you've done for the University of Michigan. Oh, that's great. Guy, uh, Sean or, or Glenn, you want to add to yeah. that? For me, man, you know, Michigan, man, has always been a, a testament of class. You know, anybody that went to the University of Michigan, athlete or just, you know, a regular student, they carry themselves with a certain amount of class. And the rest of the world may, you know, misconstrue or misperceive it as being, you know, arrogant. But it's not an arrogance. It's, it's more of a pride thing I can and, see and a representation. I can for see the that. university, because the way the University of Michigan was built on that, you know, on academia, really astute academias, and that comes with a certain level of social status, and I think it carries on in all the basketball, all the sports, all the pro, all the other extracurricular programs on campus. You just have a sense of it. And one thing for me, when I was being recruited, my father used to always call me during the recruiting process because he always wanted to go to Michigan. Dave Strack, the coach that was there before Johnny Orr. He recruited my dad out of Pioneer High School. And so my dad's dream was to play at Michigan. So mm -hmm. only thing next to that was have his son play there. That's right. And so he sold me on what, Glenn, what, what, what T. Mills just talked about, and I'm sure what G. Rice is getting ready to speak about, is about these relationships are going to carry on for the rest of your life. And the tutelage that you're going to gain you know, the mentorship that you're going to have, all that's going to carry on and mold you into the man you're going to eventually become. That's true. I, I think uh, what each one of you guys <clears throat> have said is 100% uh, correct. I think uh, when you think about the University of Michigan, you think of a first-class school. And uh, everybody that goes there, you know, they, they understand that they got to go and they got to be not just in the, on the athletic field, but in the in the uh, academic field as well, you gotta you gotta go in there and you gotta do the best you can and, and try and represent uh, the school, represent yourself, and and represent your your fellow uh, students, your fellow teammates, and 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 be respectful. I think uh, when you look at across the board, when you talk about uh, anyone that has gone to the University of Michigan, uh, one of the things you will say that they were a classy person, and, and I think that's what Michigan is all about. We respect one another. Uh, when I talk about my, you know, my my guy Terry Mills and uh, Higgins and the rest of the crew, we're all brothers. And there's not one guy that's standing above the other. We're all even killed. 
And I think that's really the main reason why we were able to win a national championship, be as successful on and off the court as, as we have been. And the reason to this day that our brotherhood has not dipped, not one bit. If anything, it continues to keep growing. And that's what the University of Michigan is all about. Yeah, and then you speak on that about, you know, how close we are. You know, I think that just being an athlete at the University of Michigan, it makes everybody close. You know, I just got off the phone talking with Mike Taylor, who was the quarterback at Michigan the other day. Mm. And we just call and just chopping it up. You know, Ward Manuel, who's the athletic director, me and Ward Manuel used to exchange gym shoes. I used to get <laughs> basketball shoes, he used to get football shoes. So mm -hmm. he was my exchange yeah. guy. So those are the type of relationships that you have, you know, as an athlete at Michigan. I mean, we, we were close with a lot of guys on their football team. Garland Rivers yep. uh, comes to mind as being one of those guys, Ohio guys yeah. that you were real close with. Jamie Morris, all those guys. Hey, all power. Them, man. Yeah. Hey, let me say let me show you how the relationship with Michigan football and basketball really is. You know, at most schools, the football players jealous of the basketball players and all that because you know it's more of them than us. Yeah. But we wasn't like that in Michigan. We was cool with the football players, man. Glenn, you remember when we was at Dewey's when we had that brawl with Notre Dame, all their fans outside. <laughs> Dude, the I, 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 wasn't there. I wasn't there. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, y'all had y'all had a brawl after the Notre Dame football. Oh, man, the, the, you know, the, the Notre Dame fans came down to Dooley's, man. I was like, what's the name of the brawl on your campus? You and Marcus talked about caves or, or, or yep, uh, same thing. Yep. The same thing. Our bar was called Dooley's. Okay. Yeah. And uh it just went down, man. They was talking smack and it just went down. We we was protecting our brothers because they but see, Rocket Ishmael wore us out the next night next morning. Remember oh. Rocket Ishmael <laughs> ran those two touchdowns did. back on? That's when lightning that. was striking. <laughs> I'm telling you. Guys, you're listening to Barber's so, Breakdown. I got my fellas, Glenn Rice, Terry Mills, Sean Higgins with us. Guys, I've always said this, and people think I'm crazy. I think you all beat the Fab Five by double digits. What do y'all think? Uh -oh. oh, you're right about that. Ain't no question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be loud and clear about that. Good. The Fab Five, hey, hey they're, they're, they're our brothers as well. But when it comes down to putting us against one another on the court, they don't stand a chance. Hey, guess what? I'm doing Ray Jackson's podcast tonight at 6 o'clock. <laughs> on oh, everything. Let, let him know. Let him know. Yeah. You know I'm going to let him know. <laughs> hey, look, 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 look. First of, all, first of all, I'm going to say it like this. Like Glenn said, the Fab Five, those are little brothers. They came to Michigan because of us. Yep. They'll tell you that. Yep. And – I remember Chris and Jalen, they used to come up there and play with us, just like Jimmy Jackson used to drive in Toledo and come get the business. Because mm -hmm. they was young. They'd come up to Ann Arbor mm -hmm. and play in Sandy Sanders. Okay. But they learned from us, right? But in terms of who would have won to answer your question, they don't match up with us. We was too deep. Yeah, too deep. I mean, for, for one, Chris Webb and Juwan, they'd have got their buckets down low. But after that, they cooked. Because I, I already know, had man. battles with Jalen before as a saint. He know what time it is. I had battles with Jimmy <laughs> King in the CBA. I gave Jimmy King 38 in the CBA. Okay. They, they, yeah. they, they he he wore little, my man. number. He, he wore 24 at Michigan, so I just said to see how real he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, no, we he would tell you. Yeah, we definitely – we wouldn't have had no problem with him whatsoever. I mean, you talk about them might be getting buckets down low, but with me, Hughes, and Vault down there – it wouldn't be too many, uh, too many guys. It wouldn't be too many, but oh, they what? They can't guard y'all. No, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. They gotta guard y'all on the other end. That's true. Yeah, right. But let me let me ask you this question though, Sean and Glenn. Um, you know, Fab Five, we love them to death. You know, hope hope everything works out with them going forward. But how many times have you been uh, kind of intertwined with being a Fab Five player? Um, I can think of probably about 20 times where people walk up to me and say, Terry, I loved you when you played with the Fab Five. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and you know what? That, that's the reason why, like, I, I got a little disturbed at our first reunion, <laughs> man. This is our day, man. And they're going to put ask me questions about the Fab Five on our reunion, man, the first one they had for us. And I just, you know, I wasn't dogging them out. I just, I just downplayed them. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't you know. listen. I don't I don't dog them out, but I, I do point this out to a lot of people when they bring up, oh yeah, you were part of the Fab Five. I was like, <laughs> no, no. I was like, I, I was not. Fab Five did everything great for Michigan. They got a lot of notoriety and whatnot. But no, I was a part of the championship team. And I and I love them. I love I, I love all of them, man. man. I I love every last one of them, man. And, and it's because like I, I watched him when I was in I was in Orlando, man. When Chris called timeout, I broke my television when he called timeout. Hmm. Okay. That, well, that's how much I was, that, I was at that game. I was at that game. I went down to uh, North Carolina and watched that game. Yeah, I love the Fat yeah. Five, man. They used to give me. I used to talk a lot of smack. They gave me t- uh, a trash talking ability <laughs> when they play. <laughs> hey guys, yeah. you know what? I it is he's almost like a little brother to me. Jawan Howard, man, when he got the Michigan job, I was ecstatic. Yes. How, so was how, I. How do you guys feel about that, about him taking over the program? I, I think that was the, the best move Michigan could have made. Uh, having Jawan, you know, come back and uh, do what he has to do, representing uh, the University of Michigan, representing himself, coming from where he was. Came, came from, and that being the uh, Miami Heat, uh, I knew he uh, had everything in place to be able to step in there and and do what every Michigan fan wanted him to do, and that's to uh, provide a family environment for our, our team and players and to definitely have the vision to be and the capability to be able to take us back to that promised land one day, and, and I really think Juwan is going to do it, and I thank God each and every day that uh, we were able to uh, put him in that position uh, where he's at today. Yeah, I loved it, uh, Steve. I loved uh, when he had that opportunity to come and, and, and be the head coach. And uh, around the time I knew they were going to pull that trigger, I actually called Jawan and I said, Jawan, is this something that you really want to do? And he kind of, you know, we had a, a, a deep conversation. And I said, it's nothing like the league here. You know, we're right. going to fly in first class, but we can't believe we're not staying at Four Seasons. We're staying at Marriott's. You know, you're not, you know. <laughs> and, you know, he just said, you know, hey, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do, you know. So, and just like what Glenn said, him coming from uh, Miami and me playing in that organization, I knew he was ready to go, and I know he would hit the ground mm-hmm. running, and that's exactly what he did. For me, yep. man, Jawan was a great, great choice for the fact that he put in the work, like Glenn said. He went down and after he got done playing his, and his career was over, he was down in Miami, man. And you could just see him, even on television, man, how much of a student of the game he is. And, you know, this is body language. He's always locked and loaded, man, and paying attention to what's going on, you know, every fraction of the second. And, you know, I, I, I was really impressed you know, by the work that he put in in Miami. Because I, I read articles, I see different stuff online. And they all the players on the team, they always talk about how influential Juwan was to him. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he had the pedigree that he had, I knew he was going to be able to recruit. And he and he had the professionalism too, man. Being, being the head guy at Michigan, there's a lot of layers to that. That's true. And Juwan fit the bill. I mean, every checkpoint, he, he checked off. And, 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 I mean, it was nobody else better for the job, man. That's, that's just my personal opinion. No, and, you know, with me having an opportunity to be around Coach Beeline, who has done so many great things for the University of Michigan, and me seeing his prep work and getting ready for the game and watching film along with him and his coaching staff, and then to see Jawan come in and do the same thing, I was more than impressed because they say when you start off as a coach that X's and O's may be the last thing that you may get a hold to or get a grasp on or getting used to timeouts and situations. Hey, Jawan checked all those boxes. Believe me, he, he was ready to go. And when I sat through that first film session and his game prep, getting ready for the game, I just shook my head. And I said, how lucky can Michigan be to get a young guy like this that's ready to go like Jawan Howard was? And, and you know, I'm going to add this too, man. Like, my first uh, uh, chance to get on, the, get on the sideline and coach, man, was in the ABA, a little semi-pro league they had, man. And my mentor at the time was Don Casey. You oh, guys yeah. probably remember Coach yeah. Casey. He's the yeah. coach of the New Jersey Nets and the Clippers. Yep. And and Don Casey, his 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 son was my business partner. And the, I'm just I'm just echoing what T Mills just said. You know, the X and O's. Everybody think that's really the major part of coaching. 
Don Casey told me, he said, you got to approach this like a businessman. He said, well, that's what it is. It's a business. You're going to manage, you got managerial responsibilities. You got to manage people. You got to make sure your program is represented in the public well. It's a lot of different layers, like I mentioned earlier, man, of being a head coach. And Juwan Howard, man, he's, he, he checked off. And, and Michigan was the best spot for him because he, he graduated from there. That's right. You know, it, it's fascinating for me as an African-American, and I'm the only color analyst, no, no pun intended, I'm the only color analyst on the Big Ten Network. And it, that bothers me a little bit because, I, you know, we try to get Terry in to get a look, uh, and I'm not sure that he got quite the look that he could have. But the thing that really impresses me about Michigan, you got Ward Manuel, who went to school, who was a football player when you guys were there. He's an AD. Right. You got Jawan Howard. And then what's my man, Terry? David, uh, the so associate athletic director that travels over back. Uh, Greg Harden. Greg Harden. Greg Harden. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. To have these <laughs> strong brothers in leadership positions says a lot to me about the University of Michigan because, you know, we have Gene Smith over at Ohio State, but outside of Michigan and Ohio State, it's really hard, uh, you know, to find leadership at that top level. And so, I, to me, that says a lot about the University of Michigan and, you know, the type of opportunities that they provide for all people, not just, you know, for some people. So I just had to get that out there. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, you know when, you, when you talk about that, and I talked with, with Ward Manuel, uh, you know, before he hired a coach, and, you know, when he was looking at Juwan, and I say, well, he's a first-year coach, and, you know, people are going to question this and that. I say, you got one ace in your pocket. You hired Kevin Ali, and he went and won the national championship. That's so right. how many people doubted you when you made that move? Great call. And I said, hey, you can answer all your questions right there. And uh, I think he made the right choice. Oh, I totally agree. Uh, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Where can everybody find you on social media? Sean? Um, on Twitter, man, I'm at uh, H-I-double-G. Well, I'm going to spell it out. H-I-G-G, -G, 1968. On Twitter, I'm um, at Sean Higgins Live. On Facebook, I'm Higgins Sean. Okay, Terry? Man, you know, I don't even know my stuff, man. I, I think on Twitter, I'm <laughs> Terry Mills underscore. Uh, I might be T Millions 52 on, um, on Instagram. And I think on Facebook, I am under Terry Mills Sports is what I'm under. Okay, Glenn. Yeah, I, I, I keep mine the same. Facebook, Twitter, and IG is Glenn Rice 41. That's all you need to know. Guys, I, I, I can't thank you enough for the time, man. We could go on forever. forever. I want to come back, though, and we're going to bring some flying Illini with the National yes. Championship, guys. We're going to have a nice connection. We're going to talk. We're going to chop it up, and we're going to have a lot of fun. But th thank you, gentlemen, for joining me uh, on this edition of Bartles Breakdown. Make sure you come back to the page. I'm trying to tell y'all, we've had, we've had Sean. We've had Glenn. Now we got Terry in the mix. Come back to this page. We, we're going to get through this COVID-19 situation together. we got some quality Big Ten legends that we are interviewing, so make sure you check back in. That'll do it for this edition of Bartles Breakdown. Until next time, peace!